。南无本是释迦牟尼佛。南无本是释迦牟尼佛。南无本是释迦牟尼佛。Homage to our respected teacher, Shakyamuni Buddha. So we are on to page 22 tonight. So today is the seventh, seventh talk. So this is a nice picture. Ah, oh, pretty. Hmm. Okay, so I have asked, I've asked you to actually do some homework last week. I hope you, d you have done some homework so that I don't have to keep on asking you, do you have any questions, do you have anything uh, sharing? <laughs> I think you just volunteer very, very bravely and very voluntarily. <laughs> okay, so this is the withered, the withered, um, uh, maple, it is actually a, actually a Japanese maple, and um, taking it after the rain, so you got the dew drops, the rain drops on the branches, so makes a very wonderful, pleasant and peaceful picture to me, to me, but anyway. Okay, so volunteers. Waifun, okay. Waifun is always get, getting the first prize. <laughs> yeah, always the first one. <laughs> so good. Sorry, my God. Thank you, people. Um, when I first start to see this picture, um, I feel the dry maple. Yeah. It's dry. Okay. And it's cool. Um, and the uh, drop the um, uh, the the tree, the branches is very um, old or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but if I uh, see it in another um, another feeling. Uh, that I see it was very quiet. Mm. And very peaceful and very quiet, yeah. Yeah, okay, good. <laughs> Thank you, Waifun. Thank you. Every, you know what? You can't trick me. You all put up a smiling face. <laughs> and <laughs> you can't trick me, I tell you. Uh, you know, I I know I know some of you are teachers, have been teachers, so I know that whenever you ask the questions to the students and some of the students don't look at you or some of the students look right into your eyes and because they don't know the answer they just they they thought they look they look right into your eyes and you won't ask them to about the questions so. Uh, you know, I'm I'm a sort of a, a very different teacher, so don't don't fake me with a smile. <laughs> don't trick me with that smile. <laughs> okay, Laurie. Okay, very brave, Laurie. Okay, unmute yourself. Yes. Thank you, teacher. Um, you know, last week when we were looking at the, the beautiful petal and the bee. Yeah. I I said I felt harmony. Yeah. And when I look at, at this picture, I get the very same well not the very same feeling, but I get a very similar feeling in that um, things are unfolding the way that they should and where the leaves are beginning to wither and fall and the rain has come and winter's coming and we're just peacefully waiting for spring. Mm. And everything is the way it should be. Mm. So that, when I look at that, I, this is what I see. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is what you see. Good. The way it is. Yes, Nora. I um, I see things are a little out of focus. Like when you see the background. Ah. 
out of focus. It's, it's, yeah. It's, it's like what everyone else said, but yeah, I think I, I just noticed that, you know, and that sort of, um, when you read the, what the quote is, which is maybe getting ahead of ourselves, but you know, it's like peeling off layers. Right? Yeah, so right. Some, some things are hidden. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very nice, yeah. There's a lot in the background, right? You want to say no, something, Eva? Oh, Versha. Okay, sure. Yeah, Versha. <laughs> Good evening, sister. Good evening. I I think I think a lot about the words um, time and change and impermanence when I see this mm. because there's a bigger change of the season. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a big change, slow change, and you can see it's on its way out. But then there's that immediate change in time that drop i know is about to fall mm. so even this bigger change there's always um other levels and and changes happening at the same time so i'm waiting for that drop to just to just fall <laughs> to just go to just like that fall. yeah right yeah good i mean this is what you see this is what you see there's nothing wrong all right yeah irene So from looking at the picture, we always, it's just, just through our sense doors, mm -hmm. you know, the sense doors is like from the eyesight and then the perceptions of the picture, it mm -hmm. depends on how we arrive, the thought that arrives mm. at that moment when you look at an object. Yes. Okay. Some could think is peaceful and some could very agitated. Mm. It just depends on how you see your perception and your reaction to the object. Mm. So if you apply equanimity mm. to accept the situation or the object that you're seeing mm. and acknowledge, acknowledge mm. what you're seeing in that situation and be objective mm. to deal with that situation. Mm. So I'm more attracted by the passage than the pictures. Mm. So um, from the book. So mm. this is how I view. Mm. We always uh, reflected our six sense doors, and our reflections is based on our perceptions. Mm. Yes, yes, of course, of course. Anybody else? Catherine Chen from okay. Catherine Chen from San Francisco first, okay, and then Maria. Good evening. People. Good evening. Uh, yeah, what catch my eyes in, the, uh, in this picture is the branch. The branch was almost uh, uh, trying to break. Mm. Um, what I can think of is this branch um, is is willpower to survive. Mm. That's why. Uh, it made use of the winter time when it snowed. It mm. made use of the frost, and then it still hold on. Mm, this okay. would just have to stand out. Mm. If um, we um, remember Buddha all the time, not just when we bask the Buddha, as mm. people were saying, and mm. um, follow his um, teaching, and then um, one day we will attain liberation and be free of suffering. Mm. That's what I think. Good, good. Okay, Titania. After Titania is Maria. Thank you, people. Good well. afternoon, everyone. When I first looked at this photo, I found um, endurance and endurance. strength. Yes. Very hard. Yeah, mm. it's very powerful. And then on second look, looking deeper, it seems like the leaves are falling down. Mm. So it reminds me of, of course, impermanence and change. And we we can't hold on to anything. Mm. We have to accept the fact that as it is, and it might shatter the way or wither the way. And this is life. Yes. Actually, I want to share a personal experience because on Sunday, right after the vision of the Buddha, my personal computer was flashed. Oh. And I was 
I, right at that time, I was thinking, oh my god, everything was lost, and uh, I couldn't access everything. And I typed lots of notes, people. I typed lots of <laughs> notes in that computer. <laughs> and I might have lost everything. And then I sat down and think, come on, Buddhist teaching is not here. OK, it's all our practice, right? Put yes. everything into practice. So I shouldn't hang on to all these things. And this photo actually showing me uh, we don't need to be unhappy, um, you know, even though we will fall down, fall down one day and with it. And so just do it and life resumes and goes on. Yeah, that's how I, my feeling is. And today I was using my office computer. <laughs> Hopefully it's okay. <laughs> Yeah, I know that. I noticed that you actually always uh, jotting down notes. Um, <laughs> ever since the first meditation session, and I thought, hey, and I, I have told the volunteers. I said, I said, keep an eye on this Titania. <laughs> She's always jotting down notes. So make sure when I'm teaching meditation, she doesn't. She has to close. She's closing her eyes and meditate rather than jotting down notes. <laughs> so. But they, 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 of course, they, 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 I don't know whether they did check on you or I forgot to ask how, whether you were jotting down notes. But I thought, well, never mind. There is a, there is a, a transition stage, right? And sometimes that when you get to a point that you said, no, I don't need to jot down notes now. I just need to actually listen, listen to the teachings. And of course, when, when we are studying Dharma, then you can, you can jot down notes, no problem. But and then and then I thought no this is okay that's okay she will eventually close her eyes and meditate and you do now <laughs> great good thank you okay great so did you did you did you fix your computer no oh okay thousand uh thousand since she said she she started doing very good after the first couple of sessions. <laughs> so so you you stop jotting down notes. So she noticed. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. So Maria, you have your hands up, so you can unmute yourself and speak. Uh, okay. Hello, everyone. Do you hear me? Good evening. Yes, we can hear you, but we cannot yeah. see you. <laughs> Yeah, I, I That's okay, don't worry. Uh, no, 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 this is my first uh, time to oh, no. join with you. No problem. Okay, so what well, I, I don't know, but then I, I just want to share what I, what I feel when I see the picture. Yes. So for me, it's the before and after. What I mean is that uh, I, I moved to Canada eight years ago. Mm -hmm. So I was living in my country. Um, and my country is like a springtime, so the same months of the year. Yes. So during, so if I saw this picture when I was in my country, I went, I went to think, oh my God, it's so cold, and I guess it's cloudy, and like a very like kind of you know, gloomy inside city. Yes. Uh, but you know, because I'm used to just seeing so pretty much every day, you know. So this is going to be kind of sad picture for me, but now that I have been living in Canada, even when I see this picture of winter, brings some feelings of uh, kind of happiness. Ah. And seeing that all the activities and the sports and the clothes yeah. that we use in winter. Yes. And bring kind of happy, happy, um, glad feelings. Mm -hmm. So, I'm just surprised about that if I saw this picture when I was living in the country, it's, I'm going to have a completely different Of course. Yes. You are. Yes, yeah. of course. Yes, of course. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Nice. Great. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Maria. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
So yes. Yes. Um, anybody else? Yes, this picture has actually, um, of course, depends on how you perceive it. And uh, any, any picture is how you perceive it. And also is, at that time, your mind, what kind of mind you're carrying at that time. And that actually will um, determine and how you actually perceive and um, react to that to to the sight of that picture. Uh, of, uh, so the mentality is really actually a, a very a, a, a big deal in 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 this perception of the picture. And uh, I, I really like uh, what Nora said. There is in the of course in the foreground that you can see a wither with a leaf with with raindrops on the branches, but in the background there's so much in the background that is so much hidden, and actually that 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 tells that tells me I think why I chose this picture to to go with this passage. Is the passage is if you remember to be continuously mindful you will start to peel off layers of old habitual reactions, like peeling off a cabbage. And you start to peel off that reaction of craving to pleasant people, situations and things, or of aversion to the unpleasant ones. And uh, this picture, I th the, the, the hidden one, the, the, the the out of focus leaves and branches and whatever that we don't see, we can't see, is really those, for me, I, I, I actually relate them to those old habitual reactions. You agree? Yeah, because a lot of times those old habitual reactions, we really do not see it ourselves. Yeah, right, we don't see it, and we don't see them. And sometimes, even after they have acted up, we don't actually see them either or either. <laughs> and uh, we, will only able, we will only able to start to see them if we actually train our mind to be objective. If we don't, we, we, we don't train our mind to be objective and we are always, always perceiving whatever, experiencing whatever in a very subjective way, then these all habitual reactions are just our normal behavior. We think they are our normal behavior and what's wrong with them? We don't see anything wrong with them. Right? So if we, we don't see anything wrong with them, what would we do? We don't change. We don't need to change. We don't need to correct them, right? We don't. We, because we think they are so, 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 you know, we think they are, they, they, are, they are okay, they are normal, they are, they are natural, this is the way I am. So, uh, I can see why I chose this picture to, to actually to go with this passage uh, really now, because those old habitual reactions are in the background. And we, if we don't bring it up, we, we, we don't allow them, allow ourselves to see them, we will never able to see them. We're never able to see them. So, and, uh, this, this actually seeing them is the best way to actually learn how to deal with our emotions, how to uh, learn how to deal with our ups and downs. So, what do you normally do when you actually um, 
encounter a pleasant uh, situation or people or things? And what do you do when you encounter un an unpleasant situation um, or people or, or things? What do you do? Laurie? Yeah. Uh, if it's pleasant, I want it to last as long as possible. And if it's unpleasant, I want it to end as quickly as possible. Yeah, yeah. Aren't we all the same, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Yeah. Anybody else? Okay, Nora. Is that a thumbs up for, for, for Laurie's? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, you agree with her? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Good. Okay. Anybody else? Yeah, I think uh, Ivy, yes. Ivy. It seems um, really smart to remember to take a free deep breath. <laughs> Yes. Um, more, and then it will get better. At least it delays the reaction, right? It delays the reaction. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Mali, Mali and Tissa, yes. I was wondering about the, term, the two terms that you use, objective and subjective. Mm. Does that mean you discern that you discern the uh, thought that came in, that you have to that you have been mindful about that, mm -hmm. is uh, good or bad? Is that what you meant by subjective and objective? Okay, subjective and objective. Because usually the mindfulness itself is not according to my, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> Uh, interpretation that mindfulness is, mindfulness is good, but itself is uh, not enough to get rid of your either pleasant or unpleasant feeling. Oh well, so mindfulness mindfulness doesn't have the goal to actually get rid of the pleasant feelings or unpleasant feelings. Mm -hmm. That's not the purpose of being mindful. Mm -hmm. The purpose of the right yeah. yeah. Go ahead. I think uh, to me it is the right effort. Yes. Uh, you know, yes, of course. Coupled with the mindfulness. Yes, of course. Two, yes, you know. yes. As I always say, not just right effort, the right view, the right understanding, the right intention, they are all they are all have to be coupled together. The eightfold noble the eightfold noble path, any 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 one of them is con interconnected to the other seven, mm -hmm. the Eightfold Noble Path. So none of them can be independently uh, uh, bring such benefits unless they are tied into the other, the rest of the seven factors, right? So that yes. is the, that is a very important concept that we have to keep in our mind. So the Eightfold Noble Path, yeah, yeah, yeah. Even though they are interconnected, so for example, uh, uh, well, uh, right effort, right? Uh -huh. I mean that particularly addresses the issue of, uh, you know, uh, getting rid of, rid of your thoughts. You know, I mean, the way that I learn, I, I know that you go on with these parties because <laughs> <laughs> They use Sangara Pahana Bhavana Anurkana. Sangara is the first step that knowing, and then Pahana means getting rid of it, no, you know, recognizing the thoughts, and then if it's a bad one, you get rid of it. Mm. And if it's a pleasant one, you keep it. Mm. And the other is Shiva Bhavana, you cultivate good thoughts and mm. Anurkana, so you maintain. But I mean, that's, that's the way that I have learned. Ah, okay, but that 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 is the, that's the way you have learned, uh, because you actually um, 
I, I don't agree with you just getting rid of it. Uh, if uh, you, if let, you, if let, 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 let go. yes, that's more important is actually letting go. Um, that's the whole thing about uh, tonight's talk is about really letting go. And how could you let go? It's not by uh, trying to push it away or getting, getting rid of it. Like uh, Laurie said, you, you have to go as soon as possible because it's very unpleasant. How can you let it go? How can you let it go? If, you're not, if you do not become mindful of its existence, of its existence and, and being aware how, how that existence actually affect you, okay? And how, that, how, the, how, how it affects you, and if it affects you in a very unwholesome way, are you aware that it is actually affecting you in that unwholesome way? And if you become aware that it is affecting you in that unwholesome way, what should we do? Oh, wow, we remember. We remember this unwholesomeness is just like weeds. So in the, in the, in, 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 in the Eightfold Noble Path, right efforts is pulling out the weeds, right? For any unwholesome weeds that we have, we need to start pulling them out, weeding it. Weeding it bit by bit. And if, the, if we don't have those, we don't plant any, any of those uh, uh, seeds into it. So we remember. And as, we, uh, 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 as long as we can keep being mindful and equanimous and just really see he, uh, how it comes and goes, and we don't just jump onto a react, reactive pattern, reactive behavior pattern, uh, or pattern or re reactive behavior, then that doesn't create new karma, right? That doesn't create new actions or new, new consequences. And because of that, then we have a possibility of peeling off the old ones. But if we keep on reacting the way that we, we react in the old way, then we keep piling it up like a landfill. Landfill. So it becomes taller and taller, higher and higher, deeper and deeper, rather than weaker and weaker, less and less. Okay? All right? Okay, Tisa? Yeah. Okay. All right. So, okay, those, so for us, there are actually, a, 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 the Buddha said, we actually have different kind of feelings, whether you want to talk about the physical feelings or the mental feelings, is just the three different types. The, the pleasant feelings, okay? So the pleasant feelings is when when you feel it very pleasant, okay. Uh, oh, oh, I got the animation wrong. Okay, never mind. So there are three different types. The first one is the pleasant feelings. The second one is the unpleasant feelings. So these these two are actually very obvious, right? Pleasant and unpleasant. And the third one is like a neutral feelings. That means, you know, neither pleasant nor unpleasant is okay. And in French, it's like, comme si, comme ça. Right? <laughs> <laughs> right. So, so when, when, when we have these pleasant feelings, what do we actually feel a lot of times? Uh, how do you feel? And, and, and actually, Laurie said, oh, I want... I want it to stay longer. And at that time, what, what is your mood like? You feel, I like to use a word, start with E and end with D. E and end with D. And follow it with an L. <laughs> <laughs> no. Lauren, you got it? 
type it in. Yeah. Elated. Elated. Yeah. Elated. Like, wow, I love it. Great. Wonderful. Right? So, so that, that is mostly when you feel pleasant. It's very elated. You're very excited. You, you, wow, it's so, such a wonderful mood and everything. Blah, 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 blah. And then, you know, or, or when you start to talk, you start to, you, you know, so many actions and the, the eyes are, uh, the eyes are like uh, 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 gleaming, like big eyes and like smiling and everything. You elate, you feel very high. And then when 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 the pleasantness is so nice and you think, oh, wow, I love it, you know. And just like Laurie said, um, no, she didn't say that. She 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 didn't say it. She only say, oh, you stay here, right? You stay here longer. Well, in another sense, it's just like that. I want more. Yeah, I want more. Can I have some more? <laughs> one more ice cream? One more chocolate? One more dessert? You know? Or one more praise? Praise of words. I love these words. It's nice. And uh, yeah, last week I was, uh, I went to um, to the store and I, 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 I you know, on the on the way in, I saw this father with two girls, and inside the store, I, I you know, in one aisle, I saw this father with the two girls, and then, then when I pay with the uh, self checkout, I saw this father with that two girls. <laughs> so I encountered them three times, and this girl, I think she must have been about eleven. She's very pretty with long hair, but with a face mask on, and she kept looking at me. I think she probably thinks that I, I, I she's, I don't know what, what, what she thinks, but she kept looking at me. When, when in the parking lot, she already started looking at me. And then I looked at her and she was looking, staring at me, but she didn't, she, she didn't have any like um, um, negative, I, I didn't feel any negativity from her, but she just looked at me and like, like this, very naive, very, very like girlish. Look, and I looked at her, and I have a big smile, and I, 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 I think she probably see my smile in my eyes, like from here to here. And then she said, "I love your glasses. <laughs> your glasses look very nice." And I said, "Yeah, aren't they? They are new." I said, "They are new glasses. They are really like I like them too. Thank you so much." She said, "You're welcome." But they really look very nice on you. <laughs> so I was so happy. I, elated, you know, pleasant. You know, people are praising my glasses, you know, my spectacles. Nice. And and when people come to with such a with such a friendly attitude, it actually brings on a very good feeling, a very pleasant feeling, right? So so you know when when I, when I talk when I talked about it, I, I, I still feel that kind of joy, you know, that that girl actually brought to me. So I didn't want, I, I mean, I didn't have anything that I wanted more, but you know, a lot of times when we encounter a very pleasant feeling, we we do a lot of time fall, fall into that black hole is I want more and I want it, possess it. It belongs to me. Don't take it away, right? Like, uh, like little baby, little baby child, if they have a stuffed toy and the mommy take it to wash and, and they will start crying and kicking and kicking and uh, throwing a scene and what? Throwing a tantrum? Yeah, right? They're throwing a tantrum because they, you take away their pleasant feelings. Whether it's physical or whether it's mental, Seeing the stuffed toy, holding the stuffed toy could be a physical feeling, but a lot of times it's a mental feeling. Okay, so the, that's, I mean, you, you can still have a long way, long list of, 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 of emotions when you encounter pleasant feelings, pleasant situations, people, or things. But when you encounter unpleasant, unpleasant ones, what do you normally, what do we normally do? Start with R and end with G.
or I'll end with T. Yeah, reject, right? <laughs> so we reject it. We don't like it. You go away. Unple especially with unpleasant people. You go away, I don't want to see you. Or you pretend that they are not there. They are transparent. I don't want to see you. You walk by without paying attention because you don't like to see. You don't like, you don't like the sight of that person or you don't like the sight of things. Pretend don't see it. Don't we all do that all the time? Yeah, we do that all the time. Okay, and then, and then, and then we avoid it. We avoid it. Uh, I remember one student asked me, you know, she had a very difficult um, relationship with one of the family members because the family members always, always scold, scold her. And she's very scared. A lot of times seeing, you know, uh, uh, bumping into this family member. I mean, we all live in just, not, not, I mean, you all live in just a house, not like Po Lam, you can, you can avoid, you can avoid each other very easily. We've got 10 acres for you to hide. I mean, or well, at least six and a half, three and a half, we cannot go in during the day because it's construction, but at least six and a half, we can easily find a corner to hide. And like Goldie can find a corner to hide herself underneath the hatch easily. If she doesn't want to come out, she hide herself inside the cave. So we can easily avoid that. But in, 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 a, in a small house, or in a smaller space, you really cannot avoid you know, uh, bumping into that family member. And she said, I just avoid her. I just don't look at her. I try, and, and when I, as, as soon as I hear her footsteps coming down, and I would, if I was going up the stairs, I would just turn right away, run down the stairs, and f find a corner to hide myself, pretending that I'm doing things, doing other things. Can you imagine in the same house, living in the same house, and living in the same place, and you have to constantly avoid that. It could be very unpleasant, over unpleasantness, isn't it? But we encounter all the, we encounter that all the time, and sometimes when we cannot avoid it, when we cannot pretend that it doesn't it, it doesn't exist, or we cannot pretend that it's it's not there then what do we do? What is the next reaction, do you think? Start with A, ends with R. Hey, come on. I give you the first one, I give you the last one. You should know the word, <laughs> right? Start with A, end with R. Oh, come on. Yes. Ayya. <laughs> Anger. Right? So when something that is so unpleasant and it's still, I mean, it's sticking to you all the time, you cannot get rid of it, then you get angry. You get agitated, you get irritated. You say, go away, you, go away. You're just like a, um, what do you call? We, we call that, um, what do we call that? 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 What do we call They stick to you. You know, those, some, some of these, um, like, Kayla. Yeah, some of those, like, Avis? Leeches? Leeches, yeah. Yeah, they, <laughs> leeches, yeah, they stick onto you. <laughs> yeah, leeches in, uh, in watercress. Yeah, they have leeches in watercress. Um, those uh, watercress which are, which are grown in ponds. Yeah, so, you know, when, when, when you really cannot, you know, shake it off and, and get rid of it. And you, you think, 
you go away. Oh, like, oh. You just want to pick it up and get rid of it, right? Have you ever had that before? And sometimes, sometimes when, it's not just with unpleasantness. Sometimes when we want the pleasant feeling so much that, so badly that we don't get it, we also get angry. Right? Yeah, like for example, if, 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 you, if, you, have a, if you have a boss who really don't like what you do or who, who really pick on you all the time, and you will start to think about your old boss. Oh, my old boss is so good. Why, why, why does my old boss have to leave this com- company? Or why, why does my old boss have to retire? Or why does my old boss... You, have to, you will ask all these questions. Why does my old boss have to leave this company? And why do I have to stick with this new boss who is so bossy and who is so irritated and who is... Because you remember the pleasantness of the old boss and you cannot actually embrace the unpleasantness of this new boss. So it's double anger. Because you don't get what you want because your new boss is gone. So you could actually react with ang- angry anger. And because this new boss is so irritated, so bossy, there's double anger. So anger on top of anger. Don't fool yourself. Don't let, don't let other people fool you, okay? So, so you can also have a whole list of, of, of uh, uh, types of feelings upon the reaction to unpleasant, unpleasantness. So the neutral one is sort of like very foggy. You sort of like, I don't know. I don't know what to do. I don't know what I feel. I don't know. Oh, so people have, people, people, a lot of people are like that. So how do you feel? I don't know. Mm. Mm. It's okay. So, so whenever people ask, how, ask you, how are you? I say, I'm okay. Don't say you are not okay. It's a neutral, it's a <laughs> neutral feeling. You're either, oh, I'm well, you know. I'm well, thank you. Oh, I'm not well. Oh, it's okay. It's okay, it's actually a very foggy answer. Agree? Yeah, it's actually a very foggy answer. It's sort of like a, a, a very misty answer. You really don't know about yourself much. So it's, when, when it's about neutral feeling, it's sort of like there is a curtain, a, a, a thin veil right there. Not a thick, thick curtain that you cannot see through. A thin veil. That you know, it's like a, like a what do you call that? Those are very um, lazy, lazy, not lazy, lazy uh, curtain. That with all these laces, beautiful laces, like a yeah, you can see through it, but you cannot see through it. It's like a, a cloudy. Okay. So those are the types of feelings that we always en- encounter that always come up. Uh, and these feelings could be emotions if you're talking about mental feelings. And these feelings could be physical. Okay? So, and, and how are we going to, why, why do we have all these feelings? It's very simple. But it's all very, uh, it, 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 it is also complicated too. And because of this thing. This we call dependent origination. So we, you all, you all should 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 know this very thoroughly. From the beginning to the back and back forward, you you should have memorized them already long long time ago. <laughs> so how many factors in there? Ten. 12, good. So, what normally is the first factor? Ignorance, good. So, I would always say ignorance is at which hour? 
12 o'clock. Yeah, very good. That's, uh, that is the easiest way to remember this circle, this cycle. Uh, this dependent origination, is, it just tell, it tells us when this arises, this, uh, that arises. When this goes, that goes. So why do we have all these kind of uh, feelings? Why do, we re why do we have all these reactive behaviors? Because of all this. So when we look at uh, uh, this dependent origination is, how are we going to take a leaf from this cycle? So when, when you look at this uh, at the five o'clock, Five o'clock to four. So, yeah, five o'clock is the contact, the fasa, fasa. So that's a contact. That means our mind contact. That means our eyes contact, our ears contact, our uh, uh, nose contact, our tongue contact, our uh, bodily contact, and the mind contact. When there is a contact, or the sensors contact with the, uh, we call the outside or the inside objects, then it creates a six o'clock feelings. Vedana, Vedana, Pali term Vedana. So <laughs> feelings. So these feelings, it could be mental, it could be physical. And, and when there is such feeling, if we start to hold on to it because it's pleasant, or we start to wanting it to, wanting it to go away because it is unpleasant, that creates factor seven o'clock. Seven o'clock, that's the craving. Craving it to leave or craving it to stay. Okay, so because of that craving, it's craving, craving it to stay or craving it to, to leave, we start to, start to attach so much onto it. It goes to eight o'clock, clinging, clinging. Because of such clinging, we turn ourselves to be, become a different person or different mentality, right? Agree? So the, full, the very, the very important, I, I am just talking about the, uh, the, the few important <coughs> um, exits that we can actually cut loose from this cycle. Of course, we can remove the ignorance, but now we are already born we are already born with such ignorance from the past. So we cannot remove those ignorance from the past. We already embodied those ignorance. We don't know how much more ignorance we, 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 we are still keeping in there. We cannot remove them anymore. So that's the, because of the past. And also the formations, we cannot, we cannot do anything because it's already in the past. Okay, and of course the consciousness and the name and the form are already also in the past. Otherwise, we won't be like this. We won't we won't think the way we are. We think because of that past consciousness, that past name and form. We were born already with these senses, with these inbuilt sense inbuilt senses, and with this body, this mind and the body. We were born in, in, into it already. So those are the factors of the past that we cannot change anymore. So the first place we can actually change is we try to cut out the contact. But really, can we cut out the contact? <laughs> Ever kept shaking her head. No, you can't. You can't, it's really, unless, I mean, maybe you, you think that you can if you hide yourself 
uh, from, from everybody. You hide yourself in a cave, but you still have yourself to deal with. Right? You still have this contact with yourself. So it really cannot remove. So what can we do? But with this contact through the sense doors, we that create a feelings. The next one is, can we do something to this feeling? Yes, we can. That's very possible. That's very possible because this link, we can actually, oops, we can actually break from this link. Okay, and, 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 and where, what else can we do? We can, we can cross out this craving with, uh, with pleasantness. We can say, oh, this is the way it is. The way it is, it will, it will soon pass. If we could constantly remind ourselves that, hopefully one day we can actually use it more um, frequently. Yeah? And um, uh, frequently and Artfully. Is that artfully? Laurie said artfully, correct, right? Yeah. So we will be able to actually um, decrease or weaken the level of our craving, whether for, for the pleasant to stay or for the unpleasant to go. Okay? And also, because if we are able to actually stop this craving, we could also diminish or weaken this, um, this clinging. So these are the four exits that we can take from this roundabout. If we are driving, if we miss the first exit, that is the contact, which is quite impossible to actually to take this con to take this exit it, which is quite impossible but so but the next one is the feeling part is can we actually focus just on the way the feeling is and try to react less and less and less so if we miss this exit the feeling exit then it comes to the craving exit then we need to, rem to remember and to re remind ourselves, well, this is the third exit already. I have already missed two. Never mind. If you still forget, if you still miss this third exit, there's the fourth one. Okay, if you miss this exit, this clinging exit, whatever you will be, you will become. Okay, you become whatever you will be, with all those things carrying on your shoulders, new and old all together. Okay, it's a very serious matter, you know, because a new and old all together is not. You are still. You are not just carrying the old ones. You are carrying the new ones too, the new karma that you have created because you forgot those two, you forgot to exit in those three exits. It sounds very pessimistic, but it is, no, it is not pessimistic. It's actually very optimistic because there are four exits. How can you find four exits in one roundabout? Do we have four exits? Yeah, 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 four exits, yeah. yeah well, you know, you have to go back four times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Running round and round, yeah. Yeah. So so those are the those are the possibilities that we can actually we can actually um uh, find way out of it. So and it says here, he said you will start to peel off layers of old habits. 
old habitual reactions like peeling off the cabbage. It, this cabbage is very pretty, isn't it? With such a beautiful background. And you, and what, what, what does it say? What does it mean by you will start to peel up layers of old habitual reactions like peeling off a cabbage? For example, if we encounter pleasant or unpleasant things, if we remember to be mindful and to come back to to find what how you feel and to stay with it, like to stay with it for a brief moment, or like Ivy said, take three deep breaths. At least you delay that reaction for that period, for that duration of three deep breaths. Right there, you already peel off the outer outermost layer of the cabbage. But then you start to react. So you may, you may add on half a, half a layer of cabbage onto that cabbage again. So next time some things come up, you forgot completely to be mindful. And you start to react. Okay, more layers on the cabbage again. The cabbage grows and become bigger. And you look at the cabbage, you say, what? Yeah, if it is a real cabbage, you will be very, very happy. But this is a mental cabbage. <laughs> and it's a mental garbage. And it's really not very nice. Because it stinks. It rots. And it's not tasty. So you look at it and say, no, I don't want my life to be so miserable. I don't want to be such a miserable person. And I want to be a joyful, bright, bright, little, happy person. Okay, let me try again. So then you start to, you start to draw yourself one, one step backward and just watch it the way it is. And when you start to watch it the way it is, and you start to watch it the way, oh, this is nice or this is unpleasant, whether it is through your eyes, whether it is through the ears, whether it is through your nose, whether it is through the tongue, whether it's through the body, or whether it's through the mind. And if you could actually see, oh, this is the way it is. This is purple. To me, I don't like purple, but this is purple. It's okay. To me, I like pink. Well, I don't have pink. It's okay. Purple is fine. So you start to see the way it is, then hopefully that reaction will be, will, will be less, would not be so strong. And when the reaction is not so strong, then hopefully you're able to subdue it much faster, sooner. Okay? So the eye contact is the cause that creates feelings, as we can see from Six o'clock, uh, from five o'clock to six o'clock, right? Five o'clock is contact, and then six o'clock is the feelings. Because with the eyes, with the sense doors, all these, they contact with an object, whether it's an external object, whether it's an internal object. And then, then because of that contact, it creates such a feeling in there. And then you will start to, yeah, you, then you will start to justify. You start to judge. You start to uh, uh, interpret, and you start to label, and you start to make preference at that time. That craving and clinging will start to set in. Okay, so be careful of these six sense doors, and 
And a lot of uh, ancient teachers, especially the, 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 the Chan teachers, they always say they are the thieves, they are the robbers. Be, be very, very careful of them. So when, when, when we actually uh, have these kind of feelings, if we start to see how it arises as, and how it stays and how it passes, if, you, if we could actually take one step backward, like what I said in the meditation is, that, experiences, uh, that experience arises at certain moment during your meditation or in your life, whether you're walking, whether you're standing, whether you're sleeping, whether you're eating, that feeling arises because of conditions. If any one of those conditions are not there, it will pass. It will not arise. If it, if it has arisen because of all these conditions, so you cannot change those conditions already. Those are from the past, right? So constantly remind yourself, bring yourself back to this present moment. Okay, now I'm not happy. Now because this has ar arisen, this is very unpleasant, or this is very pleasant. I'm feeling elated or I'm feeling very down. What should I do? Then you start to watch, you start to feel, you start to interpret, you start to dissect, you start to analyze. When that's because the Buddha taught us this is the truth. If this arises, it will soon go away. But whether it goes away at the speed that you would like, sorry, it doesn't happen that way. All right? It happens. It only goes away when the conditions are not right. The conditions are not together. Then it will go away. Then when it go away, don't cry. Because it's pleasant feeling going away, don't cry. Because why? All the conditions that make this pleasant feelings arisen, one of them is not there anymore. So it will disappear. So if you start to really see this, Clearly, clearer and clearer and clearer and clearer. You actually will start to peel off those cabbage, the inner layers of those cabbage. I have, uh, when I teach meditation, I like to teach um, the um, mosquito meditation, mosquito sting meditation, especially in Hong Kong. Um, there are a lot of mosquitoes, right? In the in the meditation uh, 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 a place that we actually released to do a seven days meditation, and and students sometimes <laughs> they go like this, <coughs> right? and even even if I'm down in California, sometimes the, the, the mosquitoes are there, and I'm a teacher, and I cannot do this go away <laughs> like this, you know. And I see the, I see I see students, <coughs> and you hear it. <laughs> You hear in the Dharma hop, pack. <laughs> or <laughs> like this. <laughs> but I mean, as a teacher, you, you, you don't do that, right? And also, as a teacher, you, we, we know better what to do, right? And, uh, and I, I always teach this, te uh, teach this uh, mosquito um, meditation is just observe, just feel the sting, how the mosquitoes sting you. <laughs> He said, really, you're crazy, Sifu. I said, no, I'm not crazy. I tell you, it works. Because the moment you start to feel it and you just observe that stinging, oh, it's really not, not very pleasant, very unpleasant. He said, okay, mosquito, how long are you going to stay? Oh, you, oh, you're still here. Oh, wow, that is a very strong and long, long, long sting. And eventually, the longest thing I think I have felt is almost like it stayed there for almost a minute. I didn't count, but it was long. 
And then I, and then I felt, I felt that, 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 that spot, they started to feel hot and hot and itchy and painful. But I don't scratch it. I don't go and scratch. And then and I keep feeling it for a little while, then I go back to my meditation to, uh, uh, object. Then, then after a little while, that, that spot disappears completely. Because why? I don't scratch, so the toxins do not spread. It doesn't create a bump. Try this mosquito meditation next time in the summer, okay? So, um, so remember feeling the way it is, is knowing the cause of the feeling the way it is. And the cause of feeling the way it is, is okay, the mosquito is there stinging. And it's it, that because there is a mosquito, right? And then the cause of contact is the cause of feeling because the mosquito is stinging me. That's why there is the contact between its, its needle and my skin and my flesh. And knowing the truth to the abandonment of feelings. Okay, if I want, if I really want this feeling to go away, I need to be objective. And this is just a feeling, a sensation. Neither pleasant or unpleasant, nor neutral. It's just a sensation. If you can do that, I tell you, that mosquito sting is really nothing. And you can get over it very soon. And then, and then the abandonment of contact is the cause for the abandonment of feeling. Because the, the abandonment of contact is not to remove the contact, it's to accept the contact. Right? So remember, so you can see, you can see this is the Four Noble Truth here. Right? The Four Noble Truth. So the, 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 the Buddha said, you need to see the feeling the way it is with the Four Noble Truth. When you start to see that feeling, you know that emotion where does it come from? What? This is the emotion. This is anger. Where does it come from? This is the cause of the anger. Is Where does it come from? Okay, how do I get rid of this anger? Then that is the whole, whole thera therapeutic treatment for emotions. The Four Noble Truths. Dun -dun. Right? The best treatment. Yeah, use a mic. Um, I really like the way you've laid it out. Yeah. And I've, um, especially this past maybe year, a year and a half, Yeah. what I've tried to, um, at least with my sitting meditation, when it's a little bit easier to feel it, yeah. is to, to feel the difference between being in contact with that thought that's causing a problem mm -hmm. and then allowing it to go of its own accord and then feeling again what it's like without that without yeah that thought there. yeah 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 good good you can hear better tonight right yeah because they have a microphone <laughs> good so good yeah this is the four noble truths um about feelings and so i uh, uh i want to put it in this context is this, these feelings, the feelings have um, uh, uh, three, I don't know how to say it. Um, okay, let, 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 me, let me just go over it and you can tell me uh, which word should I use. So you have to know about these feelings. These feelings is has arisen because of conditions. It's a conditioned arising. Or the characteristics of feelings, about feelings. I, I, now I know the word. So, 
So you know about these feelings because it's conditioned arising just now, just, just, just what I said just now. So, so what are the dangers of these feelings? The dangers of these feelings is because they are impermanent and they cause sufferings. If you start to, start to cling onto it, start to crave for more or start to crave for less. And because this is impermanence changing, changing, changing all the time. And we don't know when would this unpleasantness come back or when would this pleasantness go away. So these are the dangers of, of holding on to any feelings. Okay, so when we abandon these feelings, what do we get? What's the result of this when we abandon them? Then we subdue the craving. We sever the craving. We transcend craving. Right? So when we actually subdue craving, we actually remove layers of cabbage. We sever craving, we remove more. And we transcend, that means we are down to the core of the cabbage. Is it possible? It is. It is possible. I, 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 tot I, you know, I, I totally experienced it myself. With myself, spaghetti, oh, it's, a, it's something to crave for. You know, I can eat 200 grams, 300 grams of spaghetti in one go, no problem. But now, no. I see spaghetti, just spaghetti. Just food. Sometimes I do still have a little bit of craving, but not as much as before. And it changes. Why? Because of practice. You start to crave less and less and less and less. And you subdue that craving. You sever that craving. You transcend yourself. See? So that's all for tonight. <laughs> okay? So uh, somebody asked us uh, a question. So, so you, you know this is actually, uh, we, we, in order to have a very balanced emotions, we really need to actually focus on how to deal with our feelings. Because um, it is all these feelings that create so much uh, turmoils, psychological turmoils. Okay. All right. Somebody asked us a question on Facebook. Is uh, no on email. Is what is the essence of Medicine Buddha Sutra? Whether is it from Philippines or from from Malaysia? From, Malaysia. from Philippines or from Malaysia? Philippines. Philippines. Yeah. And is as she said, it's because the the her sifu is from the Buddhist monastery where she belongs. Oh, in Philippines. Yes. It's encouraging us to recite it 108 times, and I don't understand its main message. Our master was not able to teach it before the pandemic. Okay. The essence of Medicine Buddha Sutra. Well, essence of Medicine Buddha Sutra, as the name implies, Medicine Buddha. Medicine is to cure us to help us to have a better physique so that we live longer, we, we, we don't get sick that often, right? That's the word medicine means, to help us to have a healthier body. So Medicine Buddha Sutra, the essence of Medicine Buddha Sutra is to help us to understand our problems and to overcome our sickness. Sickness in human, human terms is craving, ignorance, anger, ill will, animosity. So, and also to vow to be reborn in the pure land of 
the medicine Buddha, which is the in the east, at the east side. So we have a medicine Buddha here. It's the blue color. They in, they radiate blue rays. Medicine Buddha. So um, do you need to really understand the um, the the true meaning of the sutra? It's very difficult to really understand it only if you, uh, I mean, understand it uh, without, without putting efforts into it. You need to read it more often, read it, read it, read it, and, and then practice, practice, practice. When you practice and then you read, when you practice and then you read, you will, you will understand the sutra more and more. Uh, just by reading it in the first uh, maybe maybe fifty times, you might not understand it. But but if you if you if you read it and then and then you keep your practice like uh, prostrations and meditation, then you go back to read it once more. Then you will understand it a little bit more and more and more. So uh, so you know the essence is really uh, help us to overcome our illnesses. The, of course, the illnesses is not the, the physical illnesses that we always, uh, always uh, think about. And, um, and also, it also gives us uh, many ways of how to, how to cultivate merits um, uh, uh, and how to actually uh, behave wholesomely. So, just, just, just keep on reading it. I'm, I'm sure one day maybe your sifu will be able to actually uh, uh, start to expound um, uh, about this medicine Buddha Sutra. One day. All right. Okay. Sorry, I, I can't say much because if I need to talk about the medicine Buddha Sutra, it's going to be like. <coughs> All right. So I, I can only give you a, a, that little bit of uh, summary conclusion. Okay, so we will dedicate our merits. May these blessings extend to all that we with all the other living beings together will attain the Buddha way. May we wish more and more people will encounter the wise words of the Buddha Study it, understanding it, practice it, and help themselves to liberate from all the entanglements, unpleasantness, unhappiness, and be ultimately and truly free, happy, and peaceful. <laughs>